So we're standing pretty much right at the edge of the monocline. Right. So the line just sloped down a bit yeah. that way. Yeah. Draw a line from the top of that cliff to the top of those cliffs. And that's your monocline. Yes, and that's your monocline. And then and the monoc waters came down <clears throat> through here. Through here. And they cut it all out. Yep. And just like scooped it and just sliced off those hills yeah. up there. But you're saying that the cutting is is more done by like a receding cataract. It's a constantly receding cataract, yes. you think. Yeah. 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 So it's it it it's it, it actually the cutting starts at the far end and it works its way back. Works its way back. Yeah. Like Niagara Falls, they say, has migrated seven or eight miles. Right. Since the ice age. Yeah. Yeah. This this happened in. A, Except in this week. happens this happens in the blink of an eye. Right. Yeah. Because it's so powerful, what's coming through. Right. Yeah. And you can really see. I mean, that that wash up debris. Yes. Along, it's just so impressive to me. Absolutely. Is that, I mean, you got to just picture waves of this. You think a flood, really, we're almost looking more like at a slurry. Yeah. Almost like watery concrete more than right, we would right, be looking at right. water. It's abrasive. It's abrasive, quite... Abrasive, very yeah. abrasive. Yeah. And, you know, yesterday, standing on the rim of, of, of Wallula Gap, you know, what we would have been seeing is literally just turbulent sea of this stuff. Yeah. Made yeah. with thousands of icebergs. Right, right. I mean, we're talking about, you know, where we were standing, there would have been thousand foot waves washing over and through that gap. Yes, yeah. So how long's the flow lasting for? The flow, probably a matter of weeks. Right. Probably measured in weeks. I think yeah. days is too short, months yeah. is too long. Yeah. Um, but it's a testimony to the cutting power of that flow. Yes. Uh, and what it's carrying, which is part of the reason it cuts so much. Yes. Like, so like, we were just saying, like Niagara Falls has migrated seven years, seven, seven miles, miles in, in thousands, 10,000 years. 10, years. Here you have a here you have a migration of of much, more than that, orders of magnitude greater in a very short time. In a very short time. Because first of all, the volume of the flow is much greater. Yes. Secondly, it isn't just water. It's it's water at rocks and trees and icebergs. And sediment laid. Very abrasive, sediment laden, abrasive yeah. stuff, which is yes. which is heavy and massive and just yeah. viscous. Yeah, and it rolls and tumbles yes. and cuts, and yes. it's like a buzzsaw. And what's moving through here? The estimates that I've seen are between 300 and 350 million cubic feet per second. Uh -huh. So, if you took every creek, river, and stream on Earth, yeah, flowing all together, right times 10 would be about the flow you threw. Seriously? Yes. It's that, it's that big? It's that big. Oh, it's that shit. Big. This is 10 times the flow of every, of every river on Earth flowing together. Every river. My God. From every continent flowing right. together. Right, right, right. And that's what's moving through here. 300 million cubic feet flowing through every second. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of water. Yeah. And see, this is just, again, one of the flows. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I've been arguing, and that's what, what Shaw brought up, and that's what this Japanese team brought up, was that the, the capacity of Wallula Gap is great enough that one flow shouldn't have ponded above Wallula Gap. Right. In other words, there had to have been more water, just like um, our sink lamp in our room was stopped up last night. Yeah. Right, it drained out slow. Yeah. If the water coming in is greater, than the water going out, it fills up. Yes. Yeah. That's Pasco Basin right. writ large. Right. So the capacity of Wallula Gap to convey the water out of Pasco Basin had to be less than the total volume coming, coming in, or there would have been no rise of water at all. It would have just been a, a flow through. Right. right. And right there, to me, that's a, um, a major contradiction that yeah. just hasn't been addressed, right. in my opinion. Right. I have not, you know, and, and when we go up through the Spokane Valley, Victor Baker calculated that the flow through there was about 750 million cubic feet per second, which was about so double, double, double this. Double this, yeah. yeah. But Pardee calculated the flow out of 
Clark Fork at about 300 to 350, so roughly about the same volume as this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then just, and so, picture, here's the Purcell Trench, the ice dam, Clark Fork. Yeah. Okay, 350 million coming through Clark Fork, double that below the ice dam. Mm. Major contradiction, and nobody's really addressed other than to say, well, Victor Baker's hydrological formula was more sophisticated than Pardee's. Right, right. But that more sophisticated hydrological formula over what Pardee used is not going to be a factor of two different. No, no. It, no. You know, you might say, okay, we can get more accurate by five or ten percent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He used what's called the Chazzy formula, Pardee did, and then Baker used the step backwater method, mm -hmm. which is is much more elaborate. But again, you're not going to get the Chesey formula has been used by hydrological engineers for a century. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's accurate enough right. for virtually all practical purposes. So I don't think that discrepancy has really been addressed. But I think the simple answer is, is that what Baker was measuring down here was including flows coming out of Canada. Right. That Pardee was not measuring. I see. And when you go up into the Purcell Trench, there's evidence of southward flows. Yeah. Now the Purcell Trench is, is pretty flat, mm -hmm. the grading point. So that means that even though it's a large volume, it's moving relatively slowly. Mm -hmm. If you've got, and see this is what a lot of these trenches in the Rocky Mountains are relatively flat. But when they hit the basalt plateau, it does this. Right. So then you got this flow coming up here, and as soon as the gradient steepens, it, it speeds up. Yes. As soon as it speeds up, it becomes more erosive. Right. Because right. er its erosion potential is a function of its velocity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there. Okay. I have spoken. You have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> so let it be written. Yes, you let it be written. <laughs> you can call me on that. <laughs> erosion potential is